school homies. Um, I am going to go over real briefly some quick tips about how to break down the math map for challenge A for your daily lesson plan and some quick tips on scaling. Um, if you want the full video, I'm going to link Leah's video right here that I find most helpful in how to organize and use this. And she'll go into it much slower with much more content. However, um, this is to help you through my daily lesson plans. And if we have not met before, hi, my name is Erica Lynn. I'm a homeschooling mom of four, and I just want to take all the helpful tips and tricks that I have learned over the years and put them into a quick, easy format for you to use so that you can be successful in your homeschooling journey also. So please like and subscribe to my channel if you find this helpful. And let's jump in. So um, the first thing I want to say is there are two options for lesson plans in my daily lesson plan. You can either study math cyclical where you are reviewing each concept every day, all four days of the week. So each math map booklet has 16 pages and pages one through four are going to cover the new topics and review old topics. And then pages five through eight are designed to do the same thing. So you can break it down and do four pages every day, one through four, five through eight, nine through 12, 13 through 16. Um, and that way each day you're reviewing the new concepts, you're reviewing the old concepts and you're covering everything. This is how a lot of traditional maths and like Saxon like to teach. That way you don't forget anything. Um, however, there is a second option. And if perhaps that is a little much for your student to be covering so many different topics each day, this is also one of the ways you can scale the curriculum is you can cover it topically. And Tuesday, you can do pages one, five, nine, and 13. And those four pages are all going to be covering the exact same topic and concept in that. And then on Wednesday, you would go to the next page, you would cover page two, six, uh, 10, uh, 14. Um, and each of those are going to cover the exact same kind of review topics. And so you can break it down that way all throughout the week. So you're going to notice both of those paths on my daily lesson plan. I have two options. So you just need to pick one and you can switch back and forth from week to week. Um, so just pick one for the week and stick with that and then make it through your 16 pages. So that's how to read it. Um, when you sit down to actually work on your math lesson, here is how Lee says you should break this down. One, you're going to start by just reading the instructions. This is different from other math curriculum. It is taught classically. So there may be sections that you're only supposed to read or sections that you're only supposed to copy or sections that you're actually supposed to work out and solve. So you need to read the instructions so that you can take in what are they asking you to do on the different boxes throughout the page. The second thing you're going to do is scan the page and determine two things. One, what is familiar and what is unfamiliar. The sections of that page that are familiar, go ahead and do those first. You don't have to work this in order. The sections that are unfamiliar, you might need a parent to work with you. You might be able to use your tools and learn it on your own. Obviously, students who start this math curriculum in the elementary school years are going to be better versed with their tools and are going to be more independent. Your Challenge A student might need a little extra help this year, but it's going to get easier as they repeat it and they go on. And I think they'll catch on rather quickly and be an independent math learner. So there are four tools that Lee has built into this curriculum. First, on the worksheet itself, she's always going to give you some example problems that you can compare to. So the problem that you need to solve, you can compare to an example, maybe above or below it, and see if you can just by looking at that example, learn and teach yourself how to solve this problem. The second thing are the charts. This is what's in the blue papers in the math booklet. And so if you go and look at those charts, most all of your math problems and answers you will be able to find in those blue charts. You can flip through there and you can copy from the chart. The third thing is the glossary. Now the glossary is a separate booklet and it has all the vocabulary. So if they're asking you to do something and you don't know what the term means, go to your glossary, find the definition, and that right there might solve your question and help you to move forward. 
The fourth tool is to use the solutions. Now, parents, the solutions page is in the center of the booklet. You can pull those out if you want to, or you can leave it in depending upon how independently you want your child to work through this. You can always go to the solution section, and if you don't know how to solve it, start with the answer and work your way backwards, just like we teach you to do in Latin, and see if you can't teach yourself how to solve this problem. Each of these tools may need more or less parental help as you're working through this. Okay, so that's how we're going to work through the pages each day. <clears throat> Let's talk about like everything else in CC, how we can scale this if it's too much for your student. All right, there are five methods for scaling that Lee wants you to be familiar with. Number one, Use your flashcards, and this may be a great thing to start practicing over the summer, especially their new notations flashcards, which honestly, having been a math person myself, I think is going to be really helpful for these students to start getting familiar with the notations that they're going to find in the higher level mathematics so they're not so scary in the future. Just knowing what those symbols and shapes mean, calling them by name, and then as they practice them more understanding how to use them as operators or tools is going to take the fear out of higher level mathematics. So grab those notation cards and begin practicing those as soon as possible but also the math facts and the multiplication facts and the fractions cards, the more you have that memorized, the quicker you're going to make it through your math lesson. And that's just across the board with all math curriculums. So you don't have to have all your multiplication facts memorized, but if you do, you're going to be able to speed through your lesson a lot faster than someone who has to sit down and calculate each one. So that's a great practice to do this summer to try to speed up your math um, curriculum in the school year. The second thing is to switch from doing the cyclonal lesson plan to the topical lesson plan. Um, so remember the cyclonal lesson plan, it's what I have at the top of the lesson guide and it covers four pages each day in order. However, if it's too much hopping around, it can help some students to stay focused on the same topic each day. And so go down to the second line of my lesson plan and switch to doing those topically. And maybe you just have one week that's really hard and you want to switch that week. But the next week you go back to doing it cyclically so that you can get your brain to connect and be refreshed every single day and you don't forget those concepts. The third way you can scale is instead of doing the full worksheet, you can just do the top box section on each page. Page. That's going to scale your amount of work and it's going to scale the time you have to put in each day. Maybe this is best for a week when you know you're running short on time and you won't be able to give math a full hour every day. You can still cover the concept, uh, less time commitment by just doing the top box on each page. Um, the fourth way you can scale this math map is by skipping pages 13 through 16 at the end. Like I said, every four pages is reviewing all the concepts. So if you know you only have time to do math three days this week instead of four days, you can just skip pages 13 through 16. And if you're doing it topically where you're doing pages one, five, nine, and 13 on the first day, you could just skip page 13 and do the first three. OK, or if you really need a scale, you could skip the last two and just do the first two pages, page one and page five. Make sure your student, however, is getting enough repetition to actually learn these concepts like Latin. Math is learned through the repetitive connections that your brain makes, which is why we like to learn it um, cyclically and practice the same concepts every single day. That repetition helps your brain make the connections from the left to the right brain and build those synapses that moves it from short-term memory to long-term memory. And the more synapses you build, then the, the more securely it's attached into your long-term memory. Okay. The fifth way you can scale is to change this from working it yourself into copy work. So if you have a really tough concept and you just don't get it, then you can choose to quit fighting, learning that topic, take the solutions key and just copy down the answers. There are connections that come just like we talked about in essentials, just from root 
copy work and that basic memorization you're getting. The more familiar you get with these concepts and these notations and the order of writing it down, the easier it is for your brain to start understanding it. So don't discredit the value of simply copying the answers and doing this as a copy sheet. And there is already copy work built into this just to start opening your brain to new concepts. If mom's not available to help teach and the student just needs to do it on their own or it's a really hard lesson and mom doesn't understand, you can just switch to copy work. Now, here's what I recommend if you do that. Pick a new color of pen. So if you've been doing all of your workbook in pencil, grab a blue pen or a green pen or a purple pen and do your copy work in a different color pen so that when mom comes in and grades this, she knows that was a copy work portion and you did not understand and do that on your own. That may be something at a later time that she wants to go in and reteach with you or just to be aware of that. She might want to grade that differently as well for your transcript. So um, those are all the tailoring suggestions that Lee has built into this curriculum. The more you practice with this, the easier it's going to get. Um, you're going to learn how to use your tools. You're going to learn how to use your resources. And honestly, that's the biggest key in math is not can you do the actual calculations, but can you learn how to set up the problems and how to use your tools and your resources. They used to say, you won't have a calculator everywhere you go, so you have to memorize your multiplication facts. Well, now we do. And it's more important that we know when to multiply and the order of operations for multiplying than it is that we actually know all of those basic facts themselves. So Lee is really working on teaching the students the concepts in math and how we use math and where we see it in the world and how to integrate it. Recognize that this is learning math the classical way, the classical model, which really should give them greater success um, as they move forward into upper web levels. All right, have a great day and I hope you enjoy your lesson plan. Bye.